Imagine that you figure out that you want to start a new business. You figure out what name you want, what sort of logo should be, like what the theming and branding should look like. And then somebody just say that, hey, you can't name your business this, or you can't keep the specific logo, or you can't have this layout of how your business should work and operate like. Well, this is what the state of most platforms is if you try to build their business on them. For example, if you go ahead and start to build or sell courses on a lot of popular platforms, what you would find out is that most of them don't allow you to customize their pages, right? That is why we built sort of our mini Vercel within Fermion itself on this custom pages, which I want to talk a little bit about in this video, how this works and what exactly does this mean? But before getting into this, let me talk a little bit about Fermion first. So Fermion is a platform that helps you build your education business online, right? So whether you're selling courses, ebooks, digital products, coding labs, coding assessments, or even if you're using, if you want to use this for your internal company, right, as an LMS, this is something you can do with Fermion. The best part is that you retain the branding of your domain or of your business. So everything happens on your own brand. You own the data, you have the analytics, you have basically everything you would want by building it as a custom platform, but you just get it pre-built off the shelf just for you, right? So anyway, let's take a look at one of the websites, which is Coders Gyan. He's also a good friend and he also also uses Fermion to host his courses and how Codescan work is that they have a couple of interesting landing pages. So if you go on learn.codescan.com, you can actually check that. You can see the link in the description also. So these two landing pages, this one and this one, which I just showed you, they are built on Fermion, right? So let's start with the very starting. If I go to the networks tab and if I disable cache and if I go to the docs page and hit refresh a couple of times, you can see that the pages are pretty performant. It's mostly under 70 milliseconds seconds in almost every case, sometimes occasionally also hitting 60 milliseconds and 50 milliseconds, right? So this is basically how it works throughout the globe. It's not just in India. If you are watching this video from US, I would urge you to try to do this and you should probably get 60 or 50 milliseconds. So one of the most important things which was at Fermion is that how do we give people the ability to create custom pages within the platform, within the product, but without compromising the performance, right? So that's number one. Number two was that we wanted to give a full blown access, right? Anything and everything you would want to do on your website, you should be able to do that. So this specific page, for example, if you notice, this page is actually built with Next.js, right? So if you look closely into the source code, you would be able to find these underscore next references, which means that it is built with Next.js app router, right? So you can build any sort of website on Fermion and host it. But most importantly, this sort of whole thing works while retaining everything else. For example, what we don't want for you is to build out the whole courses infrastructure, right? How do you create custom courses? How do you attach pricing to them? You know, fixed plan. How do you accept multiple currencies and all of that? So this is like an important thing, right? This is like a cumbersome thing to do. So you have the best of both worlds on Fermion with this custom pages. You can customize any page you want while retaining every other feature of the platform, right? Whether that's from selling courses to eBooks, analytics, gamification, affiliate marketing, you name it. So let's talk about how this, how a website like Codes Gyan works. Then I'll also show you a real example of updating the website in real time. So let's take a look at how generally a website is served, right? So you see when you type something like learn.codersgyan.com in your browser window, what happens is your browser requests for index.html, right? Let's assume that you are visiting homepage, right? So your browser would request that. Now in our specific case, this request is handled by Cloudflare because Cloudflare is the front facing server for all of our services. And then this is next handled by Next.js because we use Next.js at Formion, right? On the Next.js level, what we do is we statically render this page you know, what you were seeing the, on the code is GAN. And that is where we return this page directly to the user, right? So this is what you see on your screen then. This is what typically happens when you open a page like acme.formion.app, right? So this is like an internal domain which we have, but you can see like this is a very templated version, very static sort of version. Nowhere as close as how you would see a page like learn.codescan.com, right? So these, both of them are served by Next.js, right? Technically, both of these pages are served by Next.js over here. The difference is that for learn.codescan.com, this page, this content is static content. So how this works is let me show you. So what we want 
want, what we do over here at Fermion, this is like a very basic implementation. We are polishing this, making this better. But how this works technically is, let's say we start with a very basic HTML website project, right? What we allow you to do is upload a zip file over here. So when you upload a zip file over here, we do a little bit of magic. Let me tell you what that magic is exactly. Let's say this is the zip file which you uploaded over here, right? It has these three pages, index.html, welcome to my page and hello world. And then there are two static assets also. Now, every single thing which ends with a .html automatically becomes a route in our infrastructure, right? So it's sort of a file-based routing. So what, what would happen over here is that, let's say if Coders Gyan went ahead and uploaded this specific zip on their website, what it's gonna do is it's gonna create three routes. It's gonna create learn.codersgyan.com. It'll create welcome. It'll create learn.coders gyan.com slash welcome to my page and then it will also create the hello world notice that there is no html at the end of these routes so that is something which we automatically remove. that's number one number two is that these static assets what we do is that we copy them and we put them on an object storage in our case it's s3 right so this goes over here to an s3 bucket and the HTML over here, you know, whatever the content of this HTML file is, that is rendered directly by the Next.js server. Now remember that over here, even though we are using Next.js, it's not technically doing any rendering at all in case of custom pages because it just directly returns the HTML, right? So you might as well just build this project with Astro or Remix or anything, and it would still be served by the Next.js server, which we have, but it doesn't do any sort of processing or rendering. And the way this works is that this Next.js server, for example, let's say you are visiting this index.html. So the way this would work is that this index.html file, which you would write, this would be served by reading this file directly from our database right? So we would store some of these files in our database or in our object storage directly, but this is read by the Next.js server directly. Now, once this is read over here, the object storage is for every other asset which you have, right? So for example, you are importing certain style sheets and you are importing certain images or something around that over there. So those would be separated with the initial first source code. Now you might if you're clever over here, you might ask me that, hey Mehul, this is fine, but if I'm working locally, let's say on a Next.js application, then my local host 1337 slash style.css would work fine. But if I post this on Fermion, because you said that, hey, we take away static assets and host them on, you know, object storage, this would break, right? So essentially this link no longer works because you're not hosting it over here because this server only returns index.html content, right? Or the HTML files content. It does not return you the style sheet or any other asset which you are creating. And you are absolutely right if you think about this. So how does this even work? Like how do websites even work? Well, the reason it works is because if you go ahead and look at this page carefully, in this specific case, I'm giving you a custom CDN prefix URL over here. Now this is the prefix URL which you have to use because all of your non HTML assets would be hosted over here, right? So the style.css technically, if I upload it over here, actually becomes this whole URL and then style.css, right? Now, if you're even smart, then the next question you will ask me is that, is it my job to do all of this? Like, how do I even do all of this conversion? And the good thing is that it's not your job because most modern tooling like Next.js, Wheat, Astro, all of these come with something known as an asset prefix property, right? So if you go ahead and Google something like asset prefix Next.js, you will find this option in Next.js config also in Astro as well. So a lot of frameworks, the modern frameworks come with this, which includes the ability to append a CDN URL, right? So what you can think of Fermion is, is that this is like a hot real server, which is serving content on demand, SSR, SSG, you know, invoking every single time. But this thing over here, this is sitting in a CDN, right? So this is a CDN over here. And once you replace it with a CDN value, you can just create a website like this, where if you look, if you look under the hood of this website, you will see that the static assets are coming from CDN. So you see over here, this file 
file is over here coming from a CDN directly, right? It's not learn.coderscan.com slash next slash static. So that is not happening. However, the main website pages themselves are served by the main domain itself, right? So this is how this architecture work and what it allows you to do is create fully custom websites like this, which you're seeing on the screen right now. Now, obviously most of you would not want to do that. So there is another option which Formion provides, which is integration directly with WordPress. And this is one of my favorite things um, on Formion because what this allows you to do is spin up a full WordPress instance and you can literally create every single page in WordPress through a no code builder, you know, Elementor, a bunch of these plugins which allow you to build custom pages and uh, you can use WordPress to directly do that, right? Which is interesting because WordPress in general Nobody thinks of it as a page builder, but we have integrated it in a way where it acts like a page builder, almost like a page builder, right? So once it boots up, we'll wait for it. But once it boots up, it will create a couple of credentials, which you can use to then log in. But before we do that, let me also show you how the custom HTML project would look like, which we did not talk about. So let's say I go ahead and create a website, which is very basic, right? Just a simple HTML website. I just say, hello world over here. Now, if I want to host this on Fermion, let's say I also create an about page and if I I do something like this about me over here. This is the only website I have, right? So the process looks something like this, where I'll go ahead and compress them. So I'll create a zip file. I'll name this probably website.zip. Then I'll just go ahead and upload my zip file over here, right? So I'll just drag and drop that zip over here. It'll process my zip. It'll do all the backend calls and everything. And it'll create these two couple of pages, right? Now, if I open this, you can see it's hello world. That's it, nothing else. And over here, is my about page. And you can see they are served from the main domain itself, hello world and about page, and they are as fast as I, as they can be, right? So if I refresh this, if I head over to the docs page, you can see it's serving pretty much well under 60 milliseconds on average, 60, 70 milliseconds. Sometimes it also hits 50 milliseconds. So you can see that, so it's pretty fast, right? And it, as you can see, we also have our WordPress credentials booted up. So if I go ahead and create, not exactly create, but just log in into WordPress. Let's say if I head over and create a new page on WordPress over here, let's say if I add a new page, by the way, you can also check the domain which we have got over here. It's a pretty cool domain. But anyway, let's say I started with this, template over here, right? And I say my awesome Fermion page, you know, publish it. Notice the fonts and all also, right? It's important because if you see it on WordPress now, you see this is how it looks on WordPress, right? Now what I'm gonna go ahead and do is go back and click on this button, sync WordPress with Fermion. What it's doing in the background is creating static export of every single page you created on WordPress and it's syncing it back with the main Fermion website, right? Which is pretty cool because what it allows you to do is build your whole website using plugins, right? Not, not even like code. You can just drag drop. WordPress itself has a drag drop builder, but you can use a lot of interesting plugins on WordPress also. Once this process is done, you can see now all the pages are replaced. So now this my awesome Fermion page, if I open this over here, what you will be able to see is that it boots up like a pure WordPress like page. But again, on your own domain, thanks to the magic we did under the hood. And you can still see that it still boots, it still loads under 50 milliseconds, right? If I go to network tabs, cache is disabled, refresh it, you can see it's under 50 milliseconds, which is a huge thing. Because now not only are you getting benefits of WordPress, but no drawbacks of WordPress as in, like you're not running PHP on the server, it's a fully static page, can't be hacked, will confuse the hell out of crawlers because they will see WP content all across the website, but it's not really a WordPress website, right? So anyway, that's how you can create very interesting pages on Fermion, and that's how you can build it. If you are interested in Fermion, do check out Fermion.app. App. It's a project which is technically very impressive. That's why this video is going on this channel so that you guys also learn something new. But most importantly, it's also very impressive for hosting your real businesses, right? So it's a production ready system, ready to go. Do give it a spin. That's all for this one. I will see you in the next video very soon.